do this in the end. My name is Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, I'm here to give you a warning. I'm here to give you a warning from Europe. Um, I'm from London, and I know what happens when governments and the media collude to pander to and to mollycoddle Islam. I know what happens to gay people. I know what happens to trans people. I know what happens to women. I know what happens to all the minorities that the left claims that it is here to defend. I'll give you a few statistics from the UK. Um, my team's put together some numbers that, that I want to share with you because I want you to understand where America could be going. Gallup poll of Muslims in the UK found that not a single one of a thousand and one Muslims who were polled, not a single one thought that homosexuality was acceptable. One hundred percent of British Muslims believed that homosexuality was unacceptable. This is not radical Islam, the phrase that your president has finally been forced to say. Yeah. Woo! This is not terrorism. This is not any of the things that you see on your television connected with ISIS. This is, this is not the crazy people blowing themselves up or even the guys throwing uh, gay people like me off the roof in Raqqa, in Iran, on cranes, whatever. This is Muslims in the West. 100% of British Muslims believe that homosexuality is unacceptable. Another poll recently showed that 39% of British Muslims believe that a woman should always obey her husband. 25% of them believe that Sharia law should be enacted in the UK, which treats women's testimony in some cases as worth half or less than that of a man's. This is not radical Islam. This is Islam. Yes. And I want, you to, I want you to take away with you something that we are learning painfully in Europe now. And that is the politicians do not have your back. Yeah. The media does not have your back. People are not going to protect gays or women or blacks or Latinos or any other minority. You've got to do it for yourself. And when I said this should say fire back. As they say on the internet, armed gays don't get bashed. <laughs> and when your celebrities that you listen to, and the media that you listen to, when your politicians are saying the answer to this is fewer guns, that horrifies me. Gun-free zones are the most dangerous places in America. Because gun-free zones provide safe spaces for killers. The left likes to talk about safe spaces. Well, safe spaces for murderers are gun-free zones. And most of the most deadly and most of the big headline-grabbing tragedies and attacks in, in America recently have happened where? In gun-free zones. Yep. Because killers and crazies don't look at a sign on the wall that says no guns here and say, oh, oh, okay, then. all right, I'll go home. <laughs> they walk in there safe in the knowledge that nobody is going to fight back. Safe in the knowledge that nobody in there is equipped to defend themselves. And there are two problems in America as I see it, and I'm coming to you from a, from a continent in which we have Germany, 1.4 million Syrian, Syrian uh, migrants, Syrian Muslims in Germany now. You've got hospitals who are saying that, that their accident emergency rooms, their emergency rooms are overrun by people who spit at female doctors and say they won't be treated by them. By public buildings that are being defaced, by people who are being raped and, and sexually assaulted in their thousands in public spaces at night. And the response of the authorities is, well, what were you doing out so late? If that's not victim blaming, I don't know what is. The progressive left, the social justice warrior left in America is the single biggest enemy to gay people, to gay security and to the well-being of homosexuals and every other minority they claim to represent that exists in America today. Some more statistics from England, where I'm from. 52%, I mean, 100% uh, of the Muslims uh, in the Gallup poll believed that homosexuality was unacceptable. In a second poll, 52% believed that it should be made illegal. So my sex life, my love life should be against the law. 39% are banging the husband. 31% think that it's acceptable for a man to have multiple wives. Well, I could maybe get on board with that, but <laughs> as long as I was wife number one. <laughs> if the United Kingdom remains in the European Union, um, some of this data is going to change. Uh, the data is going to get worse, not better. Now, you might wonder why, how, how a, a thousand, you know, how a thousand and one out of a thousand and one, a hundred percent could get worse. Well, the data is going to be supplemented with murder. 
The data is going to be supplemented with more events like you've just had here in Orlando. 50 people, 49, 50 people, and another 50 maimed. This is 100 people whose lives were irrevocably, irredeemably changed by one lunatic whose philosophy was informed by not just radical Islam, but Islam as it is practiced today in all parts of the world. Muslims pouring into Europe and the UK. We see it happening where I come from, and I don't want that to happen to America. America is the greatest country in the world. There is, there is a reason I'm here, because I love this country, and I love the, the principles on which this country was founded. Freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of movement, democracy, capitalism, property rights. All of these things have given minorities rights unprecedented anywhere else in the world. It is Western liberal democratic capitalism that has given women the vote, given them access to uh, education, the workplace, equal pay, because they do have equal pay. Um, that it, that, you know, there is no rape crisis on campuses. You know, to believe that, you'd have to think that, that America resembles the Congo in the rates of rape. It's just not believable. In fact, the Washington Post reported today that out of the 2,600 colleges they surveyed uh, in 2014 for official government data, over half of them recorded zero rapes in 2014. But the progressive left, of course, will tell you that American campuses are the most dangerous place for women to be. The American left, the progressive left, the social justice left hates women, gays, and minorities. It is a band of spoiled brat white liberals who care for nothing except their own self-esteem. They don't care about anything except feeling good about themselves and advertising their own moral virtue to everybody else. And while they are doing it, they are denying the rights of minorities to protect themselves. They are denying the rights of minorities to be informed about the risks that are out there. And importing Muslims into this country is going to represent significant risk to minorities. Politicians don't want you to hear that. You hear that from people, it sounds like, oh, crazy right-wing rhetoric. This is the reality that Europe is living through. Please don't make our mistakes. America is better than that. And you have an opportunity now to save your souls before this happens. Woo! A slightly longer version of what I just said to you was supposed to be delivered at the University of Central Florida this week. But the police cancelled. The police cancelled my talk because they said I, they couldn't guarantee my safety. Well, I mean, I thought that was reasonable until my team drove past a number of mosques in the center of uh, Orlando yesterday to discover them crawling with police officers because. Woe betide anybody should be rude about Muslims. That would be a hate crime. Let's make sure that we arrest everybody who's causing trouble outside of mosques after, you know, what, what just happened. But what they couldn't do is, is spare six or eight officers to let a gay man say what the media won't tell you. Say what politicians won't say. Say what your celebrities are too fucking dumb to realize. <laughs> Which yeah. is that this is not radical Islam. It is not terrorist Forcing Obama to say radical Islam is only 25% of the war. The rest, thank God, this song's gone. The, the rest of, thanks for waiting so long, by the way. The rest of the battle is being honest about the challenges that you face in this country. Um, it's, it's not unique in America's history to have a European come and, and tell you how it is and save you from yourselves. Uh, Alexander de Tocqueville did it before me. Um, and before I was saying America could be great again with Donald Trump, although you, some of you will have different ideas about that, and that's okay. Um, it took a Frenchman, uh, and he, he came in to document the miracle of American democracy in 1835 in his book, Democracy in America. I want you to treat what the Europeans who have previously come to America and explained in economic and political terms, I want you to listen to me on social issues. I want you to listen to me on this minority war that the left has forced us into, because it's putting lives at risk. It is risking the lives of women. Look at what's happening in Cologne. Hundreds if not thousands of women now who are being routinely molested on the streets. There are swimming pools in Germany that have to be segregated. This is what we mean when we talk about the regressive left. The left that is pushing us backwards instead of moving us forwards. The regressive left whose apologies and pandering for this ugly ideology this barbaric and medieval culture have left Germany se uh, sexually segregated. Swimming pools now. There's a man time and a woman time because the immigrants that they have, the migrants I should say, can't be trusted not to rape women. There are trains now that are segregated in Germany. When this was proposed in England it was treated as a joke because 
we think that kind of thing is ridiculous. The Germans are doing it because they realize it's necessary, because they know they need it. America has a problem here, and America needs to face up to this problem. The left is not going to be honest about what's happening. Um, and I'm going to wrap up by just saying, after the Second World War, when Jews saw what had happened to them in the Holocaust, and they saw the number of other Jews who had said nothing, who had done nothing, when that particular minority was targeted by a different ugly ideology. After the Second World War, they said never again. The creation of the State of Israel, whatever your political views, however you feel about Palestine versus Israel, the pugnaciousness, the determination, and the effectiveness of the IDF, of the Israeli military forces, the fact that it is one of the most effective and brilliant armies in the world, one of the most efficient uh, fighting forces in the world, is the result of what happened in the Second World War. My hope after today, after the ugly and disgusting thing that happened here, is that gay people say too, like the Jews did after the Second World War, never again, and gay people too. Let Islamic fundamentalist preachers and Muslims everywhere who are tempted into thinking that they can treat gay people like this, they can treat women like this, they can treat Latinos like this, they can treat blacks like this, they can treat anyone like this, that we will shoot back. And to those liberals who say the answer is gun-free zones, those liberals who say, oh, can't we all just love each other? Your entreaties to peace, love, and understanding on Twitter are not changing the views of people in mosques around this city, are not changing the views of people in mosques anywhere else in this country. They are not changing the views of ISIS. They are not changing the views of the immigrants who come into Europe. They are changing nothing. They're not helping you. They're not serving you. They're doing nothing for you. They are instead lulling you into a false sense of security that you are safe. You are not safe. The best thing you can do in America, because you are in the best country in the world, as I said, and you have two things on your side that Europe doesn't. You have the First Amendment, which means, or at least should mean, that people like me, who don't even belong here in a way, you know, I'm not a citizen here, can come here and say how, whatever they feel. Most of this talk would have got me arrested in Europe. Can come here and say whatever they want, and you guys can say whatever you want. And that First Amendment is underpinned by the Second. It is your right to bear arms, it is your right to protect yourself. If two, three, four people had been armed in that nightclub, it would have ended very yeah. differently. Gay people need an end to gun-free zones. Gay people need an end to the pointless pacifism of the left because we have a threat on our shores, in our communities, in our societies, in streets not far from here that requires a response from the minorities the left has given up on. It refuses to protect us. Instead, it pits us against each other. It creates a victimhood hierarchy with Muslims at the top. Well, the problem with putting Muslims at the top is they want to kill everyone else on the list. You have the First and the Second Amendment here, so your gay communities, your women, your blacks, your Latinos, and everybody else who feels let down by the progressive left, who is looking out on the left and thinking, what did you do to us? How did you give up on us like this? And some of them are looking at the presumptive Republican candidate, others have just given up on politics altogether. What none of them should give up on is your rights as Americans to say what you want, do what you want, speak to who you want, dress how you like, express yourself however you want, go to whatever gay club you want on whatever depraved, debauched, drug fuel benders you choose to because that is your right as Americans. And if somebody comes at you with an assault weapon, you should have a gun in your pocket to protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to take your question.